left-wing professor Cornell West berated Senator Joe Manchin, Democrat of West Virginia, Thursday to change his stance on the Senate filibuster rule, continuing a weeks-long barrage against the moderate Democrat over his support for keeping it. Appearing on CNN, West told liberal host Don Lemon that Manchin needed to get off his symbolic crack pipe that Democrats were going to have to go do away with the filibuster in order to get anything accomplished and suggest that Democrats like Manchin don't have a backbone for wanting to be bipartisan. Manchin wrote in a June op-ed that he would not vote to weaken or eliminate the filibuster, igniting a backlash from the left and continued hounding from the media, who called him worse than a Republican and a democracy killer. I must say that he's going to have to get off his symbolic crack pipe, West said after Lemon played a video clip of Manchin stressing bipartisanship to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. You're going to have to do away with the filibuster in order to get any work done because you've got a right-wing party that's authoritarian with deep neo-fascist sensibilities that have no commitment to democratic processes, no commitment to democratic values. At the same time, you've got Democrats who run around and talk about being bipartisan, but for the most part, they lack a backbone. They don't have enough fight. And then they've got conservative elements in their party who stand in the way, he added. So we're really at an impasse, my brother, a serious impasse. It's very, very sad that we must keep fighting and we've got to continue telling the truth. So, One of the things that's very interesting about this statement is the um, mention of the right wing party that's authoritarian. And I don't, I don't usually like to talk about the Republicans in general in some disparaging way because a lot of the criticisms I have of them, I apply to Democrats as well. Um, but one of the things that he mentioned I find really interesting here is that he talks about Democrats running around talking about being bipartisan without having backbone. And that's something that I wish more people would criticize Manchin for because when Republicans were in charge, they were notorious for not wanting to work with Democrats. You know, you look at their tax cut bill, which, um, you know, got rid of the individual mandate for Obamacare. And then when Obamacare was passed, not a single Republican voted for it. So in a lot of instances, they show how, for the most part, as a generally as an, as a collective, they're not willing to work with the other side. And you just saw this with the January 6th commission, where only two Republicans in the whole House voted for that to be a, a thing. And you won't see Manchin say one word about any of that stuff. You know, never condemn Republicans in general, because there are some that do like to work occasionally with, with Democrats, like, you know, Collins and Murkowski, and then on some international issues, you got Rand Paul and Mike Lee, but for the most part, they, they're unwilling to work with Democrats and you never see Manchin criticize or condemn them for not doing this. But at the same time as they're allowed to go unscathed when it comes to not being bipartisan, we have this Democratic Senator in Manchin who wants people to work together, who wants Democrats to work with people who don't want to work with them when, when they're in charge. So it, it very much is a symbolic crack pipe, but it's not symbolic because it's unrealistic to, that you could work with someone who's from the other party. It's symbolic crack pipe because one side, the Democrats, always has these people who talk about bipartisanship and coalitions and working with toe in the party line. But then the other side, referring to Republicans, has very few people that reach out ever. So that's why it's symbolic. There's nothing wrong with working with someone else, but if working with someone else makes it to where you can't pass key parts of your party's legislation, or agenda rather, excuse me, to hell with it. But see, Manchin isn't affected by any of this stuff. He can live with, you know, people's voting rights being taken away and infrastructure sucking and still having a D plus, um, you know, bombing Yemen and, Syria and all these different countries because those things don't affect him. He he gets to sit there in his little suit and tie in D.C. Um, playing this game of 
you know, wanting to work with the other side who are the same ones who literally, if he wants to do any of this stuff, for the most part, will oppose him at every turn. When I say for the most part, I mean most of the members. So I, I, I like that Cornell said this. We, we don't have enough people that just, you know, cut through the BS because all the people on the media usually, if, if, if Manchin was doing this when it came to, let's say, single payer health care or the you know, Green New Deal, for example, they would they would be right there going, oh, why, why don't you guys want to be bipartisan? But because he's screwing with stuff that in general messes with groups and other protected classes, now they want to, you know, get upset. So we'll see how this goes.